Now, if a year ago you told me, David, in 2024, Corsair is gonna launch a fan screw that's genuinely gonna gargle your gentleman's vegetables, I wouldn't have believed you. But they have. These fan screws are legitimately amazing. I'm super excited about them. And they remove one of the few inconveniences left in building a modern gaming system. And in today's video, I'll show you how. Also, Corsair did sponsor today's video, but these fans do genuinely fire up my loins regardless of any monetary exchange. So with that, let's build a PC. Now before we get into some frictionless screwing, we first need to assemble the core components of the system, which I'm real excited about because it involves some brand new Ryzen CPU action. Th this is a Ryzen 5 9600X. People aren't super oh. fond of this one, but I'm still excited to see how it performs. Now for the motherboard, I got this MSI Pro X870P because it was the cheapest X870 board I could find. Although I, I kind of like the silver aesthetic of the heat sinks and stuff. It's also got a whole bunch of very fast modern connectivity. Although I'm a little bit worried about this Realtek 5 gig LAN, because uh, I've been wronged by non-Intel chipset uh, networking before. So hopefully that works okay. looks kind of cool. Oh wow, we've got some complicated I.O. going on here. There's a whole bunch of different speeds of USB going on, but there is some real fast stuff. 40 gig, nice. And we get a CMOS reset button right on the backplate. That's a really good space for it because then you don't have to dig around in the case to get to a button. Oh, it doesn't come with a cooler anymore. Very disappointing. Oh. we've installed our CPU, we need some memory. And considering that Corsair makes some damn fine memory, we're gonna use some of theirs. And I'm gonna use a kit that I'm pretty sure not many of you know exists, aside from the fact that I've used it on the channel before, but ignore that, ignore that. We're gonna use some of this Uwu Vengeance RGB DDR5. Oh yeah, it's gotta sound like it's breaking. And I'm also gonna be using this super fast Corsair MP700 Pro. It's a two terabyte drive and its speed numbers are so high, I don't even know how to read them. That's a very big number. Oh, and this is cool. Uh, I initially looked at this heatsink and I couldn't quite figure out how to get it off because normally there are like screws and stuff involved. But here, it's like a little clasp that you push in and it just lifts off. And then you... Wow, that was wildly easy. Okay, our base parts are looking real good. I think the next step is to attach a cooler. I'm gonna use this magnificent Titan 360 RX RGB. Ooh, sick. With its pre-installed cool looking fans, we're not gonna need the super epic screws yet. We'll get to that in a bit, but let's mount this to the CPU first. There we go. So now that we've attached this huge AIO, I think the next step is the case. Oh yeah, look at all that magnificent real estate for some low exertion screwing. Ooh, we've got some slight structural integrity issues with the case, but hopefully the screws fix that too. Now the reason that these screws are so exciting is that with a normal fan screw, you can see there's quite a lot of thread on it, which means especially the first time you screw it in a brand new fan, there's a huge amount of effort required. Now, huge amount is maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but there's quite a bit of effort involved. Whereas with these screws, they've got a completely different helix pattern, which means they're way easier to screw into a fan. So let me get one of the fans out of this box and I'll demonstrate. Now with a normal screw, it requires quite a lot of force to get in the first time, especially. Although these Corsair fans are pretty 
pretty soft. The material screws in quite easily. But you'll see there, that was like, I forgot to count, but I think that was like five or six screws. Whereas with the fancy new screw, you put it in, you do that, and it's like one and a half rotations and that bad boy's in. And if you multiply that by like five fans, that's at least three calories worth of saved effort. Although it does really show you how convenient modern PC building has become that a slight risk of wanker's cramp is the biggest risk while undertaking it. Uh, but that's cool, I like this. So let's mount a bunch of fans in here very conveniently. <laughs> And then, because I want to mount the radiator on the side here, because I like the way it looks, I'm going to mount some more fans in the top. And I want these fans to be intake. So I'm going to use these LX120 reverse fans, which have the opposite airflow direction to a normal fan. Yeah, I think this is pretty cool. The fan blades are oriented the other way around so that you can use them as intakes, but still have this bit of the fan showing in the case. And another thing that helps make these fans easy to work with is their IQ linkness. So you can just like snap them into each other like that. And then you can even use fewer screws to mount them. And these fans aren't even pre-prepped, right? This is just straight screwing down. And in terms of power supply, I'm gonna use one of the new third gen RMX Corsair power supplies, which these are great. If there's one thing Corsair does really well, it's power supply. Yeah, and this case also comes with one of those solid front panel connectors, which you all know gets me real hot and bothered. I'm very excited to see that this is becoming standard on cases these days. You just do that and it's, it's connected. No fiddly little wires. In terms of graphics card, uh, of course I'm using this one. I've used it so many times, but I do think it's gonna match the system really well with the cabling and stuff going on. And it's an RX 7800 XT, which is a beast of a graphics card. Oh, it's so huge. It's got a really stupid anti-static bag, but look at that beast. And if you look at the back plate, that's definitely gonna match. That's a fancy looking BIOS, which I'm here to turn XMPs on in. So this is 1440p low and Counter-Strike is doing lots of frame rates. Our overlay did break a little bit, so we don't have all the information, but we can see that we've got pretty low CPU utilization and 
Counter-Strike 2e GPU utilization. And by that I mean basically zero power draw, so let's try something a bit more appropriate. Ah, oh, there we go, well over 200 watts, that makes more sense. This is Cyberpunk running at 1440p high, and we're getting about 100 frames per second. Wow, I can't remember the last time I saw this game not run like complete garbage. Oh, I've also added a CPU temperature thingy in there so that you can see what, what temperatures we're getting. Although it's a six core CPU with some hella 360 mil AIO on it. So I, it's, it's, the temperatures are fine. Uh, everything is set to quiet preset, by the way, in terms of fans and pump speed and whatever. Yeah, wow, I'm, I'm actually kind of blown away at what Cyberpunk looks like. I have not seen it run this well in so long. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drive around for a while uh, so that we see where the temperatures top out. Oh wow, it's, it's been a while and the temperatures haven't really budged. This system is, it's running really well. Uh, we're getting 60 on the CPU. I think that's kind of where the AIO is deliberately keeping it and the graphics card slowly kind of climbed to 60 degrees Celsius. Although one thing I did notice is that the CPU utilization is pretty high for gaming, uh, but I guess that makes sense because we've, we've got a six core chip here, so it's, it's being quite widely utilized by Cyberpunk. But this is just like a lot of performance here. This is awesome. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this build, which involved a whole bunch of effortless screwing sponsored by Corsair. So thank you, Corsair, for that smooth action. There are some links in the description down below, and maybe subscribe on your way there. And until the next video, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.